In this lecture, we're going to take a look at what a top scoring general training task one letter looks like. The purpose of this is so that you can see what makes up a high scoring task one letter, what ingredients are needed to produce a high score. We're also taking a look at this model answer so that you can see which different parts of the course are going to help you for each of the different skills and for addressing each of the band descriptor requirements. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we can see our task. So let's go through the task together. One of your friends recently had a birthday celebration, but you missed it and you forgot to tell your friend that you couldn't attend. Write a letter to your friend. In your letter, apologize for missing the birthday celebration, explain why you missed it and why you didn't tell your friend and say what you would like to do to show that you are sorry. So we're gonna take this one sentence at a time and you can see that I've highlighted different sections here. And the reason that I've done this is so that I can explain what skill is being used and which part of the course you can go to to learn how to improve this skill. Okay, so dear Tom, now bear in mind the dear part will be given to you in the exam, you just need to come up with a name, an appropriate name in this case. So it's a friend, so we can say, Dear Tom, I hope you're doing okay and had a brilliant birthday. Okay, so what's going on here? Why have we highlighted this? So this is all about planning, structure and timing in lecture five. So instantly we want to think about how we are structuring each of the paragraphs, how we're structuring the, uh, the letter as a whole. You can see here that we just have a single sentence to open the letter. This is what I generally recommend that you do. This is called a purpose sentence that you use to just open your letter. And you can learn about that in lecture five. I'm just writing to say, I'm so sorry for missing the celebrations. Now, what can we see happening here? So here, and you'll be able to see this in lecture 11, vocabulary for informal letters. We are instantly using very informal language. You can see this in both the grammar and the vocabulary with the contraction of I am to I'm, and also adding the, the word just here, which we often do when we're in an informal setting. Um, so you can see this informal language being used. And in this, in this lecture, in lecture 11, we'll specifically be looking at vocabulary for certain letter purposes, like we looked at in the previous lecture, all those different letter purposes. In this case, it's an apology letter. This is informal apology language. I'm just writing to say I'm so sorry for missing the celebrations. You're probably wondering what on earth happened to me, and I can totally understand if you're feeling upset about my no-show. What have we highlighted here? Lecture six, the importance of purpose and tone. This is kind of similar to the point I made a moment ago, but whereas before we were thinking about vocabulary, here in lecture six, which is actually after this lecture, we're just thinking about how to address the task achievement requirement for an appropriate and consistent tone. Um, so here we know that we're in an informal letter. You've got, you're probably wondering what on earth happened to me? This is idiomatic language that we're beginning to use here. What on earth? You probably wouldn't write this in uh, in an in a formal letter. You might in a semi-formal letter, depending on depending on the recipient. But uh, yes, we know that we're in an informal letter here, and we're using appropriate language. But what on earth? And you can also see that here in my no-show as well. My no-show, very informal language. I feel awful, not only about not warning you beforehand, but also for not having written sooner. What are we doing with this word here, warning? How to maximize your vocabulary score. And we'll learn about this in lecture 14, and it's really all about paraphrasing and avoiding repetition. And I've specifically highlighted this word, warning, because we've made the effort to change the language of the task. So up here, you can see we've got the verb tell, down here, we've got the verb warn. It's actually even more specific than tell as well. It contains more meaning within the word. So that's in lecture 14. Next paragraph. The thing is, without boring you with the details, I've been put under a huge amount of pressure at work to finish a certain project within an unreasonable time frame. What have we got going on here? The thing is, useful cohesive devices, lecture nine, this is coming to coherence and cohesion. And uh, what we're doing here is we are introducing the paragraph 
in a way that kind of links with the previous paragraph. It also introduces a thought using a particular expression. So a cohesive device will link ideas together in a very natural way and you can learn about those in lecture nine. Again, you can see this informal language without, without boring you. I've been put under a huge amount of pressure. Okay, let's move on to the next sentence. I've had to pull a few all-nighters and it was these that prevented me from coming to your party. Okay, we've got two highlighted expressions here. Let's have a look at the a few. The reason that we're looking at this is because this is an instance where a lot of people would make the mistake of dropping the article. And uh, this is a common grammatical error. Article usage is a, a common feature of grammatical errors. And you can learn about common grammatical errors in lecture 18, as well as how to avoid them. As for the second part, we have the word these, and uh, these is a demonstrative pronoun. And we use these words to reference earlier elements of the sentence or earlier elements of the paragraph so that we avoid repetition and so that we increase our coherence and, co and cohesion. So this is another important element of coherence and cohesion. And you can learn about this in lecture 10, referencing review. Okay, next sentence. If it weren't for the resulting stress clouding my brain, okay, see this informal language again being used here, clouding my brain, and you can see here, lecture 17, the power of conditionals. I've talked about conditional sentences before in my courses. I think they're really, really useful sentences to have, and it's no different here. You can see the use of the word if. We know we're introducing a conditional here. Um, so you can learn about how to use conditionals, use them accurately and use them effectively in lecture 17. If it weren't for the resulting stress clouding my brain, I'm sure I would have remembered to call you to let you know I couldn't make it. And lecture eight, paragraphing pro, what we are looking at in lecture eight in paragraphing pro is again, an element of coherence and cohesion. It's all about making sure all of our paragraph uh, fits a particular theme, but also it's looking at how to progress in a logical, clear manner. All our ideas should progress forward in a logical way, and that's what's happening here. Okay, final paragraph. I really want to make it up to you. So although you may still be angry, let's have a look at that first part. I really want to make it up to you. Lecture seven, bullet point brilliance. So this again look, is looking at task achievement. So it's in this section here, lecture seven. And this is basically just about making sure that we address all parts of the task, not most parts of the task, but all parts of the task, particularly those bullet points. So up here you can say, say what you would like to do not just that, but to show that you are sorry. So some people say what they would like to do in this task, but they don't explain that they're doing it to apologize. We need to show that we are sorry. So this, this language here, to make it up to you. To make it up to someone is to do something to show that you are sorry. So I really want to make it up to you, allows us to address those bullet points, and you can learn about that more in lecture seven. So although you may still be angry, now I've highlighted the word although, because this allows us to introduce an element of a complex sentence. And complex sentences are important if you want to achieve a band seven or above. There needs to be a range of sentence types and they need to be accurate as well. So using accurate complex sentences in your letter, you can learn about in lecture 15. So although you may still be angry, I hope you'll accept this attached concert ticket by way of an apology. What have we got here? different letter types, lecture three. That's what we've already just looked at in the previous lecture. We were looking at the different letter types, but also the different purposes of a letter. We know that we're in an apology letter here. It's totally clear that this entire letter is based around an apology, so there's no ambiguity there. I have the other ticket, and you know how much fun we had last time we went to see these guys. What's going on at the end here? Lecture 16, how to use punctuation effectively. At the end here, you can see that I've used an exclamation mark. An exclamation mark is probably only going to be appropriate in an informal letter, um, but it is something that you can use to show your understanding of various punctuation. You don't really get the opportunity to show your understanding of exclamation marks, of ellipses, uh, and other punctuation in task two, but you do get that opportunity 
in task one a little bit more if you're doing the general training. So you can learn about that in the grammar section in lecture 16. We finish with hopefully speak soon and my name Matt. And uh, you can learn about sort of these salutations and endings also in the vocabulary section as well. One final point to make before we finish up here. You probably can see the word count down on the bottom left here. Just bear in mind that that word count also includes the task. So the actual response here is not 256 words. If we take away the salutations or at least the, uh, the beginning and the name at the end, we can see we have a word count of 189. Um, so that's a little bit more than I would recommend if you can make it a little bit shorter because that will give you more time for task two and more time for checking your work. But if you're pretty confident with your writing and you write pretty quickly anyway, then don't worry too much about going a little bit over the word count I recommend. And we're gonna look at word counts uh, and timing and things like that in the lecture after this one. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of why this letter scores quite highly and where the different parts of the course will lead you and how they will improve your skills uh, in a way that helps to address all of those band descriptor requirements. See you in the next lecture.